Right, so following up on yesterday's video, we got a lot of cool updates. Um, cool, let's start with GPT-4 Turbo. Let's get some seconds. So where do you think they come from? But we only have patients enough for many of you and what you want to do. GPT-4 Turbo supports up to 128,000 tokens of context. We're also updating the... So that's really cool. They went to 128,000 tokens, so you could upload way more information you could upload the giant pdfs etc and give it a lot to work with so that's really good cut off we are just as annoyed as all of you probably more the, G the next thing is their cutoff date which they switched Did from 2021 to 2023 we will try to never let it get that out of date again gpt4 turbo has knowledge about the world up to april of 2023 and we will continue to improve that over time so it seems like they're going to continue to add more information and make it up to date. I know Elon just dropped Gronk, which is always up to date, which is like current. But this has being and it has access to the internet. So if it doesn't have it in its materials, it could just search the web for it. But I think it'll be much better when it just has, when it's like updated every day, kind of like how Elon's doing it. They have a new Texas speech model, which I don't really care about because a bunch of other companies are already good at doing that. It's called custom models. Uh, custom models is where they're going to let like big companies pay them to develop different GPTs for them. So if you, um, I will later in the video, we're going to talk about like they're going to allow people to make custom GPTs, but custom models is the only difference here is that OpenAI is going to do it for you and it's probably not going to be available for like any company that's not super big billion dollar company we'll work closely with the company to help them make a great custom model here to do more we're doubling the model especially for them and their use case using our tools we're doubling the tokens per minute for all of our established gpt4 customers so it is easier to do more and you'll be able to request changes to further rate limits and quotas directly in your api account settings so that's really cool because I always, I always reach my rate limit on Dolly. Like it says you need to wait 11 minutes, etc. So I'm glad we have two times the rate limits. The next thing is a copyright shield, which is really good. So you're not going to get sued if you use um, the stuff that you got from ChatGBT or Dolly. I know Microsoft did this as well. So I think this is going to be a trend that we're seeing with pretty much all AI companies. I don't know if Anthropic did it yet. Or, or any of the other ones, I'm sure Elon's gonna do it as well. Copyright shield means that we will step in and defend our customers and pay the costs incurred if you face legal claims around copyright infringement. And this applies both to ChatGPT Enterprise and the API. I'm super excited to announce that we worked really hard on this and GPT-4 Turbo, a better model, is considerably cheaper than GPT-4 by a factor of 3x per prompt token and 2x per completion token starting today. GPTs. Yeah, so they got 3x pricing decrease. Uh, <clears throat> it's 1 cent for 1,000 input tokens and 3 cents for 1,000 output tokens. So that's really good because a lot of people were resorting to using open source AIs, but obviously they weren't as powerful as GPT-4. So this is really good for that, just making it more affordable because you know using GPT-4 wasn't really making sense because it was costing so much. And now the, the best one by far is custom GPTs. For a specific purpose. You can build a GPT, a customized version of ChatGPT for almost anything. With instructions, expanded knowledge, and actions. And then you can publish it for others to use. We're going to launch the GPT store. You can yeah, so those two go hand in hand, the store and the custom GPTs. And that's what a lot of people are saying is like killing AI startups. Because a lot of AI startups are just like wrappers of GPT or like it's like a website that just it's an interface to use a GPT API without actually going to chat GPT's website. And as I said yesterday in the video, like that's going to kill a lot of AI startups. And now that they released that, it is. And the next thing is like they're making the store. So it's kind of going to be like an app store or kind of like how Amazon has FBA where you have to use you have to use their platform instead of making like an AI company, you're going to make a GPT and you're going to sell it on their marketplace. And I'm sure eventually they're going to be able to like 
take out these GPTs and make them an app on the phone or like a browser app because it's going to be weird because they're going to want a piece of the revenue. And I know in the app store, Apple takes a piece of the revenue, so they might not make it like an, an app, but they might make it where like you could export it and put it on the home screen. Home screen is like a shortcut like that. Yeah, so pretty much I think the only thing that's missing is like teams, teams of GPTs working with each other, like Autogen. So Autogen is still the best for that. And um, yeah, if you're an AI startup and this kind of wiped you, I want to talk about what the future, what at least a, a good thing to do in the future is, or at least even starting today. Like I think you should start using these um, GPTs. Here I have it right here. I actually pulled it up. These are the ones that are available right now. Dolly, data analysis, game time, negotiator, etc. They don't have the one that's in the video. They don't have like the Zapier one, which I think is huge. So Zapier has its own GPT. I didn't show that in the video yet, but I think that's like the biggest thing because now you can make an app that does anything by just giving it a sentence. So that's definitely exciting. Um, and that's what a lot of these apps already are. And now that now with the Zapier Zapier GPT, it's it's like game over for these other AI companies. So I think someone that learns how to use Zapier's GPT is going to be ahead of everyone. And you could literally make an incredible app with that in like a day. So I would say practice doing that. And also, if you want to not be left behind, start making more complex app and apps and using APIs. Um, and doing things like integrating SMS, integrating things that OpenAI would never actually include just because it would be too much of a liability for them. And also using agents before, before OpenAI actually adds that as a feature because I know once they add that as a feature, there's going to be even more AI startups that get killed. But if you make something that's using agents and ever expanding and you're always inputting your own knowledge in, and it's continuously, recursively self-improving and always becoming on top of its game and using like a good agent algorithm and, and using you to always check in on it. I think you're going to stay ahead of the competition, and especially if they don't even use agents. And if they do, you'll use better agents or you'll, st you'll have started earlier. So you'll always be that much ahead of them. If you are interested in learning more or watching more of these videos or hearing more of my opinions on these things, you could sign up to my newsletter. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.